If you have uh, Bibles, we will be in the book of James. Um, uh, I use King James Version, as you already know. Uh, the book of James, chapter 3. And even though um, I'm going to cover, cover that ch chapter, uh, we're only going to read verses 1 through 10. Um, King James, chapter 3, 1 through 10. When we're ready, say amen. If we need more time, say more time. More time. Right. After the Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrew coffee. What it goes on to read, it says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to riddle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which, though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hymn. Whatsoever the governor enlisted, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a fire a world of inequity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire, and set it on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell, for every kind of beast and birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no matter tame, or can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, and I add my sisters. These things are not so to be. You may be seated. You may be seated. The hearers and, and, and the doers of, of, of the word. Um, I was blessed last week because last week I had got to be my wife's assistant coach. I got to work with her at the school uh, this morning and I actually enjoyed myself baby uh, 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 being when she finally let me be me uh, I, I enjoyed myself um but uh, the blessing of the story is being my wife and my wife is a family uh, uh, coach and especially with basketball coach um and watching her train the uh, uh the basketball players and uh being able to assist and my wife had them doing a a, a drill of a uh, bank shots on on them and I'm watching uh, the, the, the students as they're shooting, they're missing, and they're, they're making statements such as, I can't do this, and, and this is hard, and, and, and I don't I want to do this. And, 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 and I was able to stop them and, and, and say, what you believe is what you achieve. And so I literally had them stop and say, I can. Before you shoot, say, I can. And at the beginning, they were saying, I can. But then they started to believe it. And as they start saying, I can, yeah. they start making their shots. They start uh, doing yeah. things that they didn't think that they were able uh, to do. In fact, it was one of those things that I, I told them, me as my little jokes. I said, are you American or American? 
They said, I am American. I said, exactly. No matter if you're a Mexican or you're an African, it's can yes. and not can't. In our minds, we have to have this can yes. attitude. Matter of fact, many of us Christians um, have more of a can't than a can. I know that we can say that we believe all things are possible with God, but it sometimes are we just saying it so that we can get through the day. Yeah. You know, because the true test is when we're seen doing our struggles and doing our anger, do we truly believe? Yeah. Are we a can't or an ain't through the words that come out of our mouth? When we start to worry and when we start to get concerned, do we sit there and say, Lord, I know you're going to make a way to, out of nowhere, or do we say, I don't know how I'm going to make it? Uh, well, I understand that I, I know I'm going to make it through Jesus Christ. I know that I'm going to make it through God when I believe who he is. When I know that I am a child of God, I can say I can and I will. And so even in this aspect, we have to be careful because we have to make sure that we are being Christians and cr not Christ-ates. I made that word up. It might not be in Webster, but I, I, it sounded good. We have to make sure that we are Christians. And we have to understand that a lot of times our tongue is what gets us in a lot of trouble. It gets us in more trouble than it should. You ever know, you, you, you deal with people and they say, I know I shouldn't have said that. Uh, 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 forgive me, I didn't mean what I said because that tongue can get us, in, get us in trouble. Matter of fact, we'll find ourselves speaking death in situations and circumstances even when we don't realize it. Well, what, what, what do you mean? You you say, I, I, I need to go back to school and I, I need to, to develop. And you say, well, I, 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 I don't think I can I can make it. Wait, 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 wait. You're speaking death over your situation, over, over your life because of this, this tongue. You, you find yourself in a situation saying, Lord, 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 the doctor said, Lord, I, 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 I don't know if I can get through this. But we have to understand that God says, I'm forever with you. God says that I'm a healer. God says that I'm a promise keeper. God says I'm a way maker. And in this process, we have to learn how to brittle our tongue. And that's why today's subject is we must speak life and not death. Simply just saying, speak life. Speak life to you. Speak life to yourself. Speak life to those that come in contact with us to show that we are Christians, that we are Christ-like followers. Here in chapter 3 of this book of James, we must understand who James was. Now, for many of us, we know that James was the eldest brother. Well, you had Jesus, but he was the eldest brother between Joseph and Mary of, of the children that they had. He was the eldest, James. It was Jesus who God created with Mary, and then it was uh, James that Joseph and Mary created, just given who we are. But he was a powerful, when you read the book of James, you start to understand that he was giving words of, of, of encouragement to all Christians. In this epistle, we're, we're, we're seeing that he was encouraging them, and he was giving them instructions on how they and we should conduct ourselves during our Christian experience. Matter of fact, he provides insight, and, 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 and especially for those that claim to be leaders on how we should be. Matter of fact, he talked about subjects such as faith. He talked about such, such as wisdom and poverty and wealth and how to conduct ourselves when we're being tested and tempted and that we should be hearers of the word and, not, and doers of the word, not just listening and not doing anything because faith without works is dead in this Amen. book of James. He covers it so we can be and walk in a better life of this Christian experience. But in this chapter 3, he's talking about tongue. And, and, and when we look at this chapter 3, matter of fact, in verses 1 through 4, it says, again, my brethren, be not masters, knowing that we shall receive greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend, not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to brutal the whole body. Behold, we put bits in our 
horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce sounds, yet they turn about with a very small hem, with, their, with whithersoever the dove may list it. Now in verse 1 through 4, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. It's letting us know that we as the children of God, those that are called Christians, must be careful so we don't receive a greater condemnation. Well, why is this? Because as Christians, especially as leaders, we must understand that one, no one is perfect. That we all make mistakes. I was talking to one of my, my friends out of Dallas, and we were just talking about ministry, and we were talking about how sometimes the pastor thinks that your walk should look like their walk. Not understanding that our assignment and purpose is this different. I have an accountability. The leaders have an accountability that you might not have. It's things that we have to guard ourselves with that maybe you can still do. Well, what do you mean? Well, guess what? If you read the Bible, you realize that it ain't a sin to drink. But guess what? Pastor can't be in the bars looking with stars, uh, holding some Coke 45 in his hand. You know, even though it's not a sin, I can turn people away from God. But I cannot have this attitude and when I'm looking at you, condemning you for things that might not be sound doctrine because I'm not doing it. We have to be careful. We have to be careful as Christians to understand that God is going to judge us first. God is coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. And what does that mean? It means that we walked the faith. We, we, we fought the good fight. That we stood in our boldness. That we preached the word. Not that we were hypocrites or, or that we act like we were something that we were not. The greater condemnation. We must understand that our words and our actions must align. That accountability with God means that we have to know how to handle God's people and the people that are seeking God. We must talk to people to unite the body and not divide it. How can we help save a soul when we appear that we ain't saved? How can we talk about love and we're not a loving people? How can we want people to come to church but we're not a welcoming group? We must show the love. How can we say we love God but our tongue speaks different? Yeah, you, you say you, you, you love God but then we say, God, uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Well, are you trusting me? We say that, do we love God? But then the next thing that's coming out of our mouth is a way of defeat, is a way of sadness, not of joy, and saying, God, I'm going to praise and worship you through it all. We have to speak life. We must speak life, not death, so that we can keep living. James is using examples from the bit of the horse to the ship Showing that no matter how powerful or strong or big you or I may think that we are, it's always something small that can keep us and get us off track. And in this version, when we talk about the bit and that bit, we have to understand for many of us, they know that little bit that goes in the mouth. This big old horse, they got this, what we call that horse power. All I have to do is turn it a little bit and it's going to go left. All I have to do is turn it a little bit and it's going to go right. But what I have to do, is that one little thing can control us. For us today, that little thing that we have is called a tongue. That tongue, do you know that the Bible says that they give us account of every word that we speak? That tongue, it can lead us to destruction or it can lead us into blessings. That tongue. So we have to be careful. Matter of fact, we see this in verse 5 through 6 as it says, even so the tongue is a little member. And boasted great things, behold how great a matter a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a fire, a world of inequity, a world of inequity. This little tongue is a world of inequity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set on the fire the course of nature. It is set on fire of hell. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me that 
this tongue, uh, I, I, I like little facts, this tongue is only an average, the average tongue is only four inches. This thing that's four inches, but guess what? This four inch tongue has eight compressed muscles in it. And it never gets tired. Y'all know y'all say Rev talk a lot. It don't seem like he don't know how to be silent. This tongue that keeps on going, that never gets tired, can send us to hell. I'm not making it up. It, 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 it said it in, in, in the word. Why? Because, yes, we, we eat and we talk, but guess what? Can, can we can use our tongue to encourage and not destroy? Uh, it's a fire that starts with our tongue. I and mean, when you look at kindle, kindle, that's what it means, uh, uh, starting a fire. But what kind of fire are we starting? Uh, are we fire, firing that, 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 that tongue that, that, that brings on gossip? Are we using the tongue that's telling truth? Or are we sitting there telling lies with our tongue? It, it, it can uplift, it can, it, can, it can tear down, it can motivate, it can, it can divide, but it also can unite. What do we use our tongue? Do we speak life, understanding that we must continue to speak life so that we can live? Um, that, that, that tongue can be brittle. I, I tell people today, I am still looking for the person that said sticks and stones may break my bones, but word uh, never uh, hurt me. He's a liar. Words cut deep. Words hurt. Words you cannot take back. I can break my arm. I can break my leg. And if I drink a little milk, if I put a little vitamin D, if I get some calcium, my, my bones can, 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 can heal back. But what you told me 20 years ago can still sit with me, can still hold me, can still put me in a stronghold, can still make me feel like I can't accomplish anything. It's many people that's walking around this world feeling unworthy, feeling that they can't do things because of what somebody told them. It's many people that's not in the church house because of what we call church hurt. Because of the tongue of somebody said, they said, mm, look at her with that dress on. Mm, look at him looking like a drunk. Mm, I saw him instead of saying, brother, do you need help? Sister, can I help you? Sister, do you have more clothes in your wardrobe? Mothers, can we be mothers? Fathers, can we be fathers? And brutal, our tongue. In this aspect, how am I speaking life? Matter James confirms this in verses 8 through 10. He says, but the tongue can no man tame. We have to have Christ help us. Amen. We have to have God transforming us. A new word, a, a new speech, a new way of saying things. Because the human man, the fleshly man, is weak. And when we are left to our own devices, watch the things that we destroy. Have you ever been on an interview and found yourself talking yourself out of the job? My son, I love it. What about my son? I hope David Leo know what it is. You see, and then, he sit there and he went on the job and it was a, a good job interview. And the, the person started telling him that the, the, the things of the job. And he said, well, I can't do that. I said, oh, Lord, you know, we came back home broke. We didn't have nothing. And, right, we talk ourselves out of situations that God wants to bless us in because of our I can't, I ain't attitude. Sometimes we let fear control us where we can't accomplish the things that God is saying, don't fear. I am with you. It starts watching how we do this tongue. It, it, it goes on in verse 9 and says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father. Therewith curse we men. Well, you know, we always talk about the royal commandments. We always talk about those things. I can't say I love God and I don't love my neighbor. How can I say Hosanna? How can I say Zion? How can I say these things, but then I talk about you like a dog? How can I say that I'm a lover of God and then I find myself saying negative things about you, unfounded things, assumption of things, untruths? Now, sometimes we have to understand correction and observation is not the same 
of me condemning you. Me telling you the truth that's based off of evidence and fact is not the same of me not knowing. What do you mean? Somebody told me something about you, so now I naturally believe and assume that's true about you. Instead of finding out for myself, somebody, you know, your, your girlfriend or your, or, your, or, your, or, your, or, your, or your your best friend tells you something about somebody and they expect you because they hate them that you should hate them too. Wait a minute, that's unfounded. But if I'm telling you it's too truth, don't get offended about that. But then I must watch how I deliver the truth as well. I must be delivering you truth out of love. I must be delivering, delivering, delivering the truth to you the way I want God to deliver it to me. But we must understand that our tongue can destroy. He says, Again, in, 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 in verse 9, that when we bless, we God, even the Father, that would curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. What that means is the resemble of God. We should resemble God in what we do and what we say and how we write. Are we saying we're Christians? Are we saying that we're Christ-like? Well, if I'm Christ-like, I must press towards the mark to walk and to talk and to speak like Christ would. I, I must show the mercy and the grace of God. Matter of fact, in 10 it says, out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursings. My brother, these things shouldn't be. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to make it more plainly, but James lay, really laid it out already. It, matter of fact, it preaches itself when you sit there and you study and, and, you, and you read it. But some of us might not understand the ye's and thou's and the arts, and I'm trying to put my little country twist to it for us to understand that we must speak right and talk right and understand that it must edify and encourage, that it must uplift for God, giving all glory to God. And in fact, we have to understand again that we can't control our tongue by ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit. We need that anointing. We need that Holy Ghost to be in us. We need to, to say, God, what do you want me to do? God, what do you want me to say? God, what should I say? That means sometimes, ooh, thank you, God, it comes back to me and says I have to be quick to listen. I have to be slow to speak. In the aspect of things, when you see troubles and turmoils in your life, are we quick to listen? Are we uh, slow to speak? Or do we want to give a response without receiving it all the way in? Matter of fact, not only will the Holy Spirit help us in this, guess what? It takes us to have a renewed mind. That Holy Ghost will give it to us. It gives us a renewed spirit. The Holy Ghost will give it to us. It will give us an understanding. Because now we're being touched with God's anointing. We're understanding now I'm going to walk gracefully. Now I'm going to be merciful as God has been merciful to me. So then we'll find ourselves doing more blessing and not doing the cursing. God said he would bless them that, uh, that blessed us and cursed those that will curse us. This is what he told Abraham. Matter of fact, Genesis 12 and 3, that's what it says. It says, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Well, we talked about from generations to generations. When I'm starting to understand, not only to train my child, but to do blessings, then guess what? That child is going to train that child to do blessings. We'll start to understand how to walk with a positive mindset and how not to sit on the negative things or dwell on the problem, but focus on the solution. And then that solution start to build up the kingdom of God. Matter of fact, Jesus said in Luke 6, 28, he said, Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully, despitefully use you. Oh, man. Lord. Oh, Lord. Little Johnny took my TV. Lord, I got to pray for him. Yes, because you should have locked your door. Yes, you should have had cameras on. Keep praying for him, baby. You know, now you might not have to let him back in your house, but keep praying for him. You mean I I I I, I need to, to still bless those that have lied on me? I, I need to still keep moving. Yes, yes, you still do. Why? Because the Bible tells me that if that's my enemy, I'm still supposed to feed. If that's my enemy, I'm still supposed to give them drink. Amen. If that's my enemy, I'm still supposed to clothe them. Because why? One moment we were enemy to God ourselves, and we weren't saved like we should be saved. But guess what? God in His mercy and His grace, He's upon us and through 
shine upon us. Look where we are now. We have to speak life and not death. We have to understand, even as James keeps continuing through 12 through 13, and in my summary of it, he goes through talking about how can a fountain give something sweet and then give something bitter? Bitter. He goes on to talk about how can the fig tree produce figs, but then also produce uh, berries. You, you cannot be double-minded. You can't be two-faced. You can't be an apple tree giving oranges. You cannot be double-minded and say one thing and do something else. You cannot be do as I say and not as I, as I do. The minute people are watching us as we go out and you're talking about how blessed and highly favored we are in things and then next thing you know you out there in the clubs doing everything they do. God know my heart. Yeah, he sure do. We have to watch and cannot speak another man's truth, but we have to speak the truth of Jesus Christ. We cannot just say something to make you feel better, almost like last time. We can't just do things, but we gotta tell you the truth, and I gotta tell you out of love. Baby, I don't condone what you're doing. I'm not condemning you, but I have to let you know that God is not pleased with you. And then I back up and I pray for me and for you. Lord, show us the way. God, touch us in us. The way that we can do things that's pleasing in that side. We have to continue to speak life. Because we can't say hallelujah and then say hell to you. And sometimes we do that. Somebody work your nerves. They get you agitated. You say, I ain't dealing with them no more. You say, God, you got to take it because I, 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 I can't. And then a lot of times we don't realize that God is trying to work in us a patience that we've never had before, a strength that we never had before, with a courage and encouragement that we never had before through that same person or that same thing that you think is a stronghold to you. Matter of fact, we are allowing us, uh, us to stop growing because it's something that came up before us and it seems like it's a wall that we can't get over but we have to understand that we have to use Jesus so we can break through the wall he didn't want you to climb over it he didn't want you to go to the left he didn't want you to go to the right he wanted you to go straight through it but you had to do it with Jesus we have to speak life even through 13 to 17 and if you bear with me I want to read it it says who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. That's what it says. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion. And every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. I love it because it's telling me, though, that one is for everybody. God is there for everybody. It's not impartial. God has no respect to person. Matter of fact, it says we must have a good conversation and wisdom in our words. Something I've been able to say and been blessed with the general students, we have to understand because we grew up, some of us grew up understanding the word knowledge is power. Well, I got to correct that. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is a key to obtain it because if you don't have wisdom, guess what? You won't be able to gain it. When you don't have wisdom, you don't know when to shut up or when to speak. When you don't have wisdom, you don't know when to stand up or sit down. You don't know what, 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 what Kenny Rogers say, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to run away. You without wisdom. And so we have to understand, even in this, we have to continue to speak and continue to say we are speaking and speaking God's words to the people. But hate or jealousy 
causes disagreement. And what it's sharing with me in here is that is of the devil. We talk about we a prophet is a prophet and we a prophet lie. Because in our heart, while we're trying to do the Lord's work, we're still holding envy and we're still holding jealousy. Matter of fact, they'll talk about they're intimidating when it's our insecurities that's keeping us away from what we need to be. You getting jealous at this person because this person has this gift for children. You get jealous at this person because this person got the gift of teaching. You get jealous. No, what is your gift? And use your gift. And understand the body should come together. Fit and join it. We should use it together for the kingdom to keep growing the kingdom. In fact, the enemy is the one that comes to kill and destroy, destroy, destroy. Christians, we are supposed to give abundance of life through Christ because Christ's life, as it reminds us in John 10, he is the life bringer. It says the enemy comes to kill and destroy, but I come to give you life and life more abundantly. As Christ's like Christians, we should be providing life. We should be providing direction to the light. And sometimes, yes, you, that person that you're providing it to might be off the beaten path, as you say. But my light is going to shine on you. And sometimes I might have to pull you back home. But we're going to get you there. Because guess what? I was lost. Once I, I, I wasn't found. Once I was that one sheep out of the 99. And I had to remember somebody came for me. And so we have to understand this. That, that even though we, we want to be a God, we have to watch our tongues because guess what? That tongue can kill things. Even when I see you not in church, I, I, I might want to call and say, now where you been? You know if you say you love God, you, you should be sitting in a church house. But I have to learn to say, baby, are you okay? Is everything all right? Is anything that uh, I, I, can, I can do? What is keeping you from? Why? Because you've come to find out that there was a misunderstanding. They took something the wrong way. And you might have to apologize. Guess what? As a true Christian leader, you apologize even when you're right. Why? Because God is not the author of confusion. And if it helps you to hear me say, I'm sorry, or I apologize, then I'm going to say it to you. So you can get right back with the Lord. Don't use me to keep you in hell. My direction and my mind and my thought should be on the heavenly and kingdom places. And that means despite what you do to me, if I understand who I serve and who I'm with, then babe, I'm going to forgive you from jump. And so in this aspect, we have to understand that sometimes we kill ourselves in what we say because we're quick to say what we can't do instead of what we can we, instead of we saying all things are possible and truly trusting it and believing. Think about it in your life and some of the things that they didn't think that you could do. Think of the things of things that they said you shouldn't do. But guess what? God had you doing it. God was looking at you and saying, watch how I make you and build you up. Watch how I show the glory of my glory in you because they're going to see when you trust in the Lord. Oh, some of us should have been dead a long time ago, but because of God. We heard this morning in Sunday school that Hezekiah, God added to us and, and he gave us how good is God this morning. We got to give God glory in all things. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Are we seeking peace? Are we looking to be right? Are we looking for peace? It's what sometimes you got to settle. What, what do you mean? I'm not saying so uh, 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 beneath yourself, but I'm saying sometimes you have to realize if it ain't got to deal with salvation, why am I even going to argue about it? Believe what you want to believe. Yeah. Uh, you want to believe in St. Nick? Okay, believe in St. Nick. Now, nah, but if you ask him, I'm going to say, well, you know, I don't see no big man coming through no small chimney. But this is the thing. 
It ain't got to do, no, do nothing, nothing to do with salvation. My job is to make sure that we're staying on the track of salvation. And I'll be honest with you. Some of us that, they, that we might call ourselves theologians. Some of us that because we went to seminary school. You know what I'm Sometimes get caught up on knowledge that has nothing to do with salvations. That's great I can teach you homiletics. And that's great that I can teach you how to present. But is it power in it? Is it spirit in it? Is it anointing in it? Wait a minute. Hold up. Sometimes we profess ourselves to be wise. We become fools. And then our tongue runs away with us. I'm just speaking truth this morning. I have to understand that it starts from the leadership on, on down. Have you ever noticed when you have a kid and stuff, if you don't train that kid right, that kid act like you? Have you never heard somebody act just like your daddy? Boy, that's what I, I get. You act just like your daddy. That wasn't a positive thing when they say it that. We have to train in love. We have to train in truth. We have to do things, and that starts with our tongues. We, just, we have to speak life and not death so that we can keep living. We have to speak life to others so they can keep living, so they can seek Christ, so they can keep moving, so they can receive God's wisdom and power and prosperity that he has. We are supposed to be the examples. We have to continue to seek God's wisdom and guidance to help us. Matter of fact, we know in James 1 through 5, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let her ask of God. That give it to all men liberally. What do you mean? You mean you saying my door is open. All you have to do is come to me. All you have to do is seek me with sincerity. And, and I'll give you the wisdom. Why? Because I don't need you to have man's wisdom. That can be foolish. But if I give you my wisdom, and what I like about God's wisdom, and guess what? I said it before. God's wisdom sometimes don't even make sense. God can send you to a field, say, come here, Abraham, I need you to go. And I need you to go to this land. But God, is some enemies over there. Don't worry about it. That land is yours. God's saying, come on, Joshua. I need you to go over there. And I need you to understand that the walls of Jericho are going to fall down. But I need you to trust me. It might take seven days. Can you be patient? Can you wait? Do you know how to scream out the name hallelujah during your process? God is there to give us wisdom. We must ask God to give us the wisdom so we can watch our thoughts, so we can watch our tongues, so we can speak life, so we can be pure of heart, so we can be peaceable, gentle, and easy with the people. Oh, 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 oh. There's stories in the Bible that even the super saved can get in trouble with God. What do you mean? Well, Moses, 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 why did you struck and hit that rock like that? Why? Because he said, look here, ye rebels. Must we give you water too? That's what Moses said. His tongue got him in trouble. And then when his tongue got him in trouble, guess what? His actions got him in trouble because he smited that rock and that rock was Christ. Sometimes we have to be careful, no matter who you are, from the pulpit to the door, that it can get you in trouble. Now, I thank God for grace and mercy. I thank God for repentance. I thank God that he's forgiving. I thank him that he's slow to mercy. I mean, quick to mercy and slow to anger. We should have been destroyed a long time ago. Matter of fact, we should have been destroyed when it came to Adam and Eve. But God had mercy. Matter of fact, if you read that story, you don't understand. It says he went... Through the cool of the day. And as my spiritual mother used to say, she said, baby, just think if it went, if it went through the heat of the day. He probably would have destroyed and burnt up everything in there. Because you have never been in the heat. You don't get frustrated in the heat. When it's hot, you just get ag agitated. But he went in the cool of the day. And a lot of times he'll allow us to cool down before he speaks to us. A lot of times we get amped up. And a lot of times we get emotional. But when we learn to sit and meditate, I'm thankful for my wife because she meditates and she hears the voice of God, not that I have to sit and let down. Let me cool down so I can hear the voice of the Lord. Let me stop asking things and, and just sit there and listen. Let me stare off so I can hear what he has for me. And that's why sometimes we have to understand that when we are do this, he'll allow us to be peaceful. He'll give us his peace. And that way we can be gentle and easy. Fathers, 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 we must learn this a lot with our children because sometimes we can be a little rough. Uh, okay, I can't talk. But I know sometimes I can be a real rough and I, I can be a little tough sometimes. And I thank God for growth through my stages because with my older children, I didn't get it all worse, right? I didn't get it all. Matter of fact, maybe the lives is probably benefiting from it all. I had to apologize to Nadia a couple of years ago because I realized I didn't allow him to be a child. 
Sometimes I got so caught up in seeing how smart he was that I forgot that he was still a child. That he still needed nurturing and he still needed the loving and caring of a father. But when you stay with God and you start to mature with God, you don't let that you say, oh God, I'm going to do better. Because that's what this life is about. Can I do better tomorrow than I did today? Can I do better today than I did yesterday? And so in this, we have to understand so we can have his mercy and his good fruits. So we can be Christians of Christ. What you say? Christians of Christ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I need to be a Christian of Christ. Not a Christian of Mama Daddy. Not a Christian of Union Baptist Church. Not a Christian of St. Peter's. Not a, a, a Christian of, of a tradition, but a Christian of Christ. Because it's showing that I'm Christ-like and not a hypocrite. And so we can be and have, as verse 18 says, when you read this whole chapter, uh, what it says, it says, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in each of them that make peace. It says, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. What do you mean? The more I perceive and the more I try to make peace, God is going to make more peace for me. Ooh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that woman at the Walmart store said something nasty to me. But God, I'm going to make peace. My wife was looking at me the other day because one thing about this week, we got to eat lunch all day. We got to eat lunch together and spend time together. Got to be spending my money. But, 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 but we got to spend time and love it. And we were at Subway and stuff. And my wife was over and she came over to me and she saw my face was just real. I was ready to go off. I was big on respect, and you didn't respect me, and I was ready to yank you across that Subway sandwich. You know what I mean? I want olives and you with that. That's what I want. But because God's peace, I thought before I did. I thought before I speak. And I just learned to be courteous with the one that came and was courteous. Now, I showed my wife. My wife got an earful. You know what I mean? But those that were before me, saw a peace given out. And I learned to honor that person that was more, that was respectful to me, saying, I thank you. I hope you have a great day. I appreciate you. And sometimes we have to look at the positive and not the negative because the negative just wants to bring us down and the negative will make our tongue become negative and our, and our thoughts. And believe it or not, we talk about the tongue, but guess what? It had to come through your mind first. Yeah, you did. You thought it. Anyway, we have to understand for God's peace. And then we understand Matthew 5 and 9 where it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they Amen. shall be called the children of God. And so we have to understand that we must speak life, not death, to keep living. We must speak life to others. And all this should help us understand. Well, oh, this is here to go. Proverbs 18 and 21. What do you mean it's all connected? Well, what does it say? We know what it says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You mean to tell me I was almost at the end of the book in, in James of this Bible and then went all the way back to the Old Testament to understand that God has been saying it the whole entire time that we must watch how we speak and we must watch how we say because we can kill things. We must bring life. You know what I'm saying? You ever have somebody, now I don't have a green thumb. And I don't know, I, but my mama had a green thumb. Matter of fact, her, her thumb was so green that she stopped buying Christmas trees because the ivory uh, that she had grew up so big that she just put lights on it. Now, as a kid, you understand, you're like, this ain't no Christmas tree. You know that? But she put presents around it and the, and the lights around because she had a green thumb, but I would watch her go around and water the plants. And guess what she would do? She would speak to them. She would talk to them. She would give them life. I watch people go out here and speak to animals and say, ooh, come here, boo-boo, and all those things, but then talk to the person on the street like they're not a living soul. Don't you know that we have to speak life to one another so that we continue to grow, that we continue to have hope, that we continue to have strength, that we continue to have Jesus at the forefront. We got to keep moving. I'm almost out of here. We have to speak life. And we have to understand that we have to keep our minds on Christ, who is the life. The light of this world. 
the light that keeps bringing, the light that never turns off. Forget Motel 6, he kept the light on for us. Remember that commercial back in the day? I'm dating myself. We kept the light on for you, but Jesus keeps the light for you. And that's why we sing this song, this little light of mine, I'm, I'm going to let it shine. We have to continue to speak life to ourselves and others. And we start with understanding how Jesus died for us and how he went to Calvary and how he went and set the captives free. And then he gave the keys. What? Because he took the keys of death. And now he's saying that you got life. You got eternal life. You got life that can be with me if you trust in me. Have you confessed Christ? Have you been baptized? Do you believe that I need to be in my word that I can continue to move? Because this word is what gets us through. This word is what keeps us from struggling. This word, and before I have the word of the Bible, guess what? I have to have that word, which is Christ. And when I have that word of Christ, Guess what? I can get through all things. When I have that word of Christ, I can understand that trials and tribulations don't last. When I have the word of Christ, I understand no matter what mountain or whatever hill comes before me, I can keep climbing. I can keep moving. I can keep saying glory. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for bringing me through this. God, I thank you for watching my mouth. God, I thank you for so I didn't say what I didn't have to say. God, I gave it to you. And matter of fact, when you start to give it to God, guess what? Don't you know he'll put something in that other person's mouth so you don't say the wrong thing? Don't you know that he'll, he'll open doors so you be like, whoo, because I don't know about you. Sometimes I'm tested. And I say, God, it's easy if I just say this, but it ain't the truth. So I say, God, I need you to, to help me. And next thing I know, that person will say something. That person will reveal. And all I can say is glory, glory because I realize if it was me and it was left up to me. Woo! So we thank God this morning. Let's give a lot of hand clap. We have to understand that we got to speak life. The doors of the church are open. 